Hi hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and a new video for you. I have spent the last few days messing around with making masters for resins and re reviews and this and the other. And as you know as well, I've got the Sherman on the go. And um, basically, I thought I haven't actually just sat down and made a model for months. I haven't sat down and actually done any actual you know scale modeling because doing that Sherman tank it's modeling but it's a huge scale and it's not like modeling it's it's very very big and chunky and, you, and you're sort of building it to be tough rather than building it to be beautiful so I thought what I'm going to do is sort everything else I don't care what anyone says I'm going to start another kit and I want to build this remember I did a review on it a couple of weeks ago and I'm going to build this start to finish paint it everything in one video so uh. It's going to be finished, built in one video. So, um, first thing I had a problem with was the colour. The paint callouts, let me just show you in here. The paint callouts on this kit are a joke. They're worse than like 1960s Airfix. Um, if you look here, let me show you. Right, so we've got here, we've got gloss green, gloss black, black plastic details and aluminium. Right, okay. So can you see the difference? I mean, we can see there those steps are black, um, but only just. Now the rear fenders I've looked and some seem to be black in references and some seem to be green. So I think I'll stick with the black just to break it up a bit. Uh, but certainly the steps on both sides, the toolboxes and air cylinders, whatever they are, they're black. Uh, I'm gonna do the chassis black, wheels are green and the rest of the thing is green. Now. Gloss green, yeah, okay. I have been told reliably by somebody over on ARC that the, and also um, a few of you, including Andy Richards, have contacted me and said it would have definitely been olive green. Now, pictures I'm looking at, they look a lot darker than, that looks darker to me than olive green. And also it's very, very shiny. But apparently the correct call out is FS34087, which is this one, which is a semi-gloss olive drab. So I'm going to use that. So that's Mr. Hobby Aqueous 304. Uh, and you can see it's it's not as dark as what is on the box front, but I think it'll look quite nice because it'll be a semi semi gloss. I'm going to use this for the tires. This is my um, Mr. Hobby 77 tire black. I really like this one, this tire black here, the MRP one. But the biggest problem with that one is it absolutely stinks, but it is really, really good. Um, but I'm wondering if it's going to look a little bit too gray up against the green and everything. I think it looks great like on a grey aircraft or something but um, I think with this it's going to look a bit too grey. So I'm going to go for this Mr Hobby Tire Black which is a lovely colour and then for the chassis and everything else it's going to be um, Semi Gloss Black X18. Now interior, I haven't got a clue, I can't find a picture of interior of the cab anywhere. So um, I think I'll just paint it green, perhaps give it a gloss coat and paint the seats black. I don't know, perhaps put some variations of tone whatever but um, I don't think there's really much to the interior anyway. Whether I build it with all this open or not I don't know but you can see on the side of the box here we've got images of it open on that. So what this is going to do it's not going to be a fully detailed build I'm not going to go through and show you every single step. What I'll do is I'll come on camera when I've got a bit done or come across an issue or want to show you something specific to look out for. So if you want to build this kit this will be like a bit of a guide for you. Um, if you've got it get it out it, it does look very very nice but as we always say, I've done loads of reviews on kits. You can't tell what it's like until you actually built it. It's, it's all well and good having fantastic detail and rib detail and this, that and the other. But if it goes together like a dog, then it's a dog. So um, I don't think it is. Let's see. Just before we start, for the newer modelers amongst us, I'm just going to quickly show you what tools I'll be using. I've got my Tamiya side cutters here. Um, these are not side cutters, they're actually snips. Uh, these are the, I can't remember the numbers now, I think there's, one is 129 I think, or 135 and one is 035 or something. These are the better ones, you can see the difference there. I much prefer these, I have, I've had a couple of pairs of these, I thought I'd try these, I much prefer these. These are the ones that they've got longer, longer heads on them. So um, yeah, I much prefer them. I think these are called the Slim Jaw and they're, they're just the normal ones. So um, I can't remember what the numbers are and I wouldn't like to say which is which because I don't want to lead you down a garden path but if you look at pictures you can see 
this one is this one on the right is longer jawed or slimmer jawed than the one on the left okay so that's my preference um so there's my side cutters there i've got a couple of scalpels here just a number 10a blade and a number 10 blade i find that's all i need for anything i never use those two blades and then my glues i've got premium hoppers holder here i've got mr hobby cement s mr hobby sp not exactly sure what the sp is but it's bloody good stuff and I use, tend to use this for, like when I glue the tank together, I'll use this because the, the brush is big and you can really plaster it in there and get it going. Um, and then we've got our, here we've got our premium hobbies holder again. Extra thin, quick setting, normal extra thin, which is the glow to glue for everybody. And then this one here is an old extra thin bottle with um, plastic weld in it. And then for sanding sticks, I've got the premium hobbies holder here with the pretty much full infinity range of sanding sticks, sponges. These are called the matadors. These are called the zebra sticks and these are called the sponges. And then you get these here, which are a, a PE photo etched stainless steel with a, a self adhesive um, abrasive on there. So uh, really, really handy to have and a great little holder for keeping all your bits and pieces in. So that's what we're gonna be using. Um, already shown you the paints. So let's have a quick look in the instructions and I'm just going to give newer modelers a couple of tips. Always familiarize yourself with the instructions first. They generally say, um, it doesn't seem to say on there, I can't see it. They normally say, um, always familiarize, familiarize yourself with the instructions before you start. And basically it's always a good tip because particularly with a lot of these Asian kits, they can have errors in the instructions. You'll you'll sort of, you know, you'll get to here and say you might, that might be missing and you'll see all of a sudden they're showing it all going in and you hang on, I'm going to put your seats in. So, you know, and then also um, you'll be going through and you'll find that the mirrors have suddenly appeared like this, even though they never showed you how to put them in. So always worth familiarizing yourself with the instructions. Also, you need to know, because it might say you have to drill certain sizes and that, make sure you've got the drills you need. Um, and also familiarize yourself, familiarize yourself with major assemblies um, and you know what parts are clear and, and what's what and just sort of get you know get an idea of the build it's a fairly simple build there's not many steps to it there's only what's that seven steps so there's not really much to it at all but the other thing to do is look through here so they're starting off with the cab so you could start with this and follow through and everything as, as the instructions tell you. Luckily the glazing is going in from the outside so we can paint the cab and everything. Then we can put the cab on and then we can put our windows in afterwards and make sure we don't get any marks or anything on them. Okay, so that's the way you could go if you wanted to. But then I come along here and I've got this box assembly. So I really want to get that built up and make sure I've got no big seam issues on that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll build the box up. We've got here the option to have the louver door raised or lowered so we can just leave all that off and decide later what we're going to do and then if we want to cut this about in here and add some pipes and cables we can let's see how the rest of the model goes first and then coming down here we've got the main fuel tank itself going together and the actual chassis rails going together now here is one thing for me rings alarm bells that is a big piece okay a bit, very big parts here's Here's the top section of it here. You can see that's, there's my hand. So you've got a massive seam all the way around there, which is gonna need filler work or possibly need filler work, but definitely need glue in, let it go off and sanding. So if you leave it to the step when you need it, then you're gonna have to stop while you wait for the glue to settle and everything. So what I always do is say, look through the instructions, find your major assemblies that you're gonna be putting together, glue them together first, okay? And then looking through here, so basically, yeah, the only major assemblies we've got, we've got the wheels and tires, which are, we can probably wait a little while. We can build those while we're waiting for some paint to dry. Um, but we've got the chassis itself and the fuel tank. Main thing is going to be the fuel tank. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I don't need the instructions for that. B52 nose there falling off. I used to have a break from this stuff. I've gone mad with this B52 nose part. So um, I'll get that glued together and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so just quickly... Um, this tank has got some massive sprue connection points on which I've just roughly sanded down. Never really worry too much about sprue connection points on a on a seam because you can be working on the seam anyway. You can also see we've got the sink marks here where the um, where the little sprue location points are. 
so that's a bit of a shame um, but you know we're going to be filling in there anyway so it's not so much of an issue and also if you look at it this the, this is the bottom side it's handed this is either forwards or back so luckily kinetic have engineered this kit oh, sorry should i say skunk model they've engineered this kit so if you look at these alignment pins if you actually line up the center pins and put it together but it's the wrong way round. it's stepped like that so um this is something that uh Good model companies do, and bad model companies don't. Um, and it's all in the engineering design. You know, if, if an engineer designs the tool in so that you could put that out of the way, then you know, possibly 50% of the models being built will be built the wrong way. So this here is now a nicely sanded, ready to go. I've gone in between here. I've sanded here with a 220 grit stick, and I've basically just, just sanded all that flat. So what I'm going to do now is come along with my contactor, which is probably going to be blocked up. Yep, so what I can do now is just unblock that and then I'll be back. Okay, so now you can see I've got a nice bead of that contactor cement all around there. Be careful not to touch it and make sure we get this the right way round. So that is the wrong way round. So this is the right way round. We can line up those pins and just push this together. And you may be asking yourself, why are you using that glue? Reason being, when you've got a large seam like this, like say a pair of fuselage halves, what can sometimes happen is you, you do the normal sort of, um, you know, you hold it together and you come along with your extra thin and you drop it in. You may end up with a dry area. With this, you're guaranteed to have glue everywhere. And what I can do now is come along with this Mr. Cement SP and I can run this into the join. That's going to really guarantee that we get a proper solid weld. Now the downside to this is, because this is a solvent based material, the glue I mean, it, the joint is going to take quite a while to cure and if I come along too quickly and try and sand it, fill it, whatever I'm going to do, it will sink back and you'll end up with a line. So. One good way of ensuring we get a really good solid joint is to do it like this. But the downside to it, as I say, is it means we're going to have to wait. Now, you could use super glue and then you won't get any shrinkage at all. But the problem there is you use super glue, it's quite brittle. So if you squeeze it like this and make that joint, you know, just flex a bit, it'll just crack and split open and that will show under your paint. So that's like that now. And I'm just basically saying this little bit just for the newer modelers. So what I'm going to do now is hold this with my fingers and I'm going to put some rubber bands on it. But what I don't want to do is put rubber bands on it while that glue is still really wet. I want to wait for it to go tacky. So I can feel it with my finger now and I can feel it's gone tacky, it's sticky, it's not um, it's not wet. The problem is you put rubber bands on there and the glue is wet, it will capillary out under the rubber bands and ruin your, um, well, ruin your day. So we can put a rubber band on there like that. Put that about a third of the way up. And then we got this a bit too big. It's a smaller one. There we go. Just ch touch the joint. There we are. So that's all held together now. And I'm going to put another one on there, I think. These little things here, I got these like in a pound shop. Uh, don't trust them for bits like this because the trouble with them is they, um, they go on there, they stretch it, everything, and then you come back to it a couple of hours later and it's ping, it's pinged off. <laughs> so, absolutely useless. So, there we are. So I'm going to leave that now for a good few hours, let that go hard, and then we can put some filler, Mr. Surface or whatever in there and deal with that seam and get it totally seamless. We also need to polish this plastic because it's got a, if you can see it on there, the plastic's got a bit of a grainy finish to it. See this side's glossy and that side's not. So that's the feature of this whole model all the way through. Right, so it's been a few seconds for you and um, a long time for me. Got this box all assembled. Fit isn't brilliant, but um, make sure you get all the sprue nibs cleaned up. A lot of the sprue nibs actually run into the areas where you want to get a joint, like down in that sort of the mitre joint there, and make sure that's all cleaned up. So that's all um, good and rubber bands holding that together while that cures. So we'll have a bit of Mr. Surface work to do on that. Now I thought I'd get the actual main chassis up together so that can be all um, 
hard and everything when we're, when we're ready to use it rather than have it all uh, squidgy and still solvent like with glue. Now there's a major lot of cleanup on this. Um, this is the actual centre section, C23. You get a centre section of the chassis and they're telling you to make sure, <coughs> make sure, make sure it goes together. That they're saying be careful and what they're referring to is if you look here you can see in the middle there's these two I'm assuming they're gearbox mounts and you can see they're actually facing upwards so there they are there okay now and you can also see that we've got one cross member behind them and two in front so two cross members in front so we've got to make sure we get those the right way around that's also got a little lump on there but it isn't shown on the on the instructions so a bit strange also the sides are sort of because of the draft on the mold tool they're kind of this shape rather than when I, when I say that I mean looking along it like this so they're kind of this shape so you want to sand them flat and square otherwise you'll get your chassis rails on an angle so I've just sanded them out um, got a fairly coarse 220 grit um, infinity stick here this is a zebra stick I just basically just go over until you don't see any of the shiny plastic showing through and then you know you're you're good I mean the most important areas are by the cross members because obviously everywhere else it will just um, push it out of the way if it's in the way so just go around like this just sanding it squaring it up Obviously it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because it's not like a, a tractor unit where you're going to see the chassis. This is all hidden underneath the fuel tank and the cab and everything else. So, um, so basically, yeah, just, just make sure it's all nicely cleaned up and there's no horrible edges. Also, all around the inside, what I've done is gone round and um, sanded that out as well because you've got, you've got edges and there's sort of mould seams everywhere. Just clean them up and make them look a bit better. Now the chassis rails themselves, they're a mess, um, absolutely covered in mould seams. There's uh, ejector pins on here and here, which you need to cut out and get into those corners with. And I've just used a, a number 10 blade, a sort of cut in and then scrape away. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect because that's where the, um, the fuel tank's going to mount. So <clears throat> it just needs to be clear to make sure it's not fouling anything. But um, we probably will sort of not weather this as such, but we probably will add a bit of um, bit of life to it. But um, you can see that all along this of the chassis rails, there's mould seams coming in and out, and all sorts. And the chassis rails themselves aren't aren't um, square. You can see there's some mould seams there. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about here. So I can just scrape that away with a knife just to get rid of that, just because it's ugly, you know. And then come in with a sanding stick. Again, go all the way down the chassis rails and then finish them off. Finish them off with an 800 zebra stick, nice and flat, nice and square, and uh, does the job a treat. Okay, but you can see by all the green on everything. And these things, these are the Infini um, photo etch sanders, and they're really good for like when you want to get in areas like that. You can get in, you know. And it's the thing is, it's flat and square. If you use like these skinny sticks, are great. I love them. They're, they're brilliant. But if you use a sponge on that, you're going to end up rounding off the corners. Sometimes you need something skinny and hard <clears throat> yeah, to, uh, to get in there and keep it all nice and flat. So there we go. So that's that done. Now I'm going to get these glued together. I'm just going to run over the inside edge as well, actually, because there's some bits and pieces sticking out on there. It's actually um, not a very cleanly moulded kit. It's like going back a few years. Um, so here we go. I've got this the right way up now. So we've got that, like a cup facing upwards, as it's shown there. Two outriggers in front, or two cross members in front. You've got the chassis rail here without the, this one's got a box on as you can see. And there's the box. So just drop that one in there. And make sure it fits in. Now you've got a bit of play forward and aft. Make sure that if you put, if you push it forward on this side, make sure you push it forward on the other side. What you don't want is your chassis rails to be like this so what we'll do is we'll just glue one side and we'll let it set and then what we can do is um, glue the other side on after and make sure it's all uh, square and everything and, we'll, and I'll show you how to do that when we do it. Building chassis is quite um, quite a little task when it comes to truck kits especially when they're long and spindly like this one is. 
So I've put quite a large drop of glue in there, so that's going to probably have capillaried up about a good inch and a half, two inches. So I'll put another drop in here. I touch the be careful not to touch that. If you don't touch it, it'll just evaporate and it'll be fine. And I'm going to put some down in there. There we go, nice big drop. And I'm also making sure I push the chassis rail up. Okay, and then when we do the other side, we'll also make sure we push it up. Because this is narrower than the gap. Okay, so that's all in like that. I'm just going to put a drop in here. Because we want this to be nice and strong. Okay, so I'm pushing the chassis that way, I'm pushing the frame that way up into the chassis rail. And then when I fit the other side, I'll do exactly the same. And I've got it pushed forward up against that stop at the front. Okay, so when we fit this one, we need to do the same. So make sure that this is up against the top of the chassis rail and that it's butted forward hard up against it. To keep it square and what we'll do at the same time while the glue is still soft or even just clamp it before we glue it and make sure that we've got the the front bumper or the rear bumper will probably be better the rear bumper um square so we want it absolutely square perpendicular to the chassis rails so there we go so i'm going to leave that now to go hard and i'm going to put a couple of clamps on it Let's get a couple of clamps out now i'm going to use these little bulldog clamps rather than pegs because they tend to spread the load over a wider area. Um, we've got a few of them here. There we go. Just find another one, here we are. And put that one in there. There we go. So I can leave that to go hard now, leave that for, I don't know, half an hour. And then we can go on and put the other side on and I'll show you how to get it all square. Right, that's been drying for about, I don't know, three quarters of an hour now. I've actually just got back from the post office. I've uh, been and posted all your bulkheads and Titanic porthole drilling jigs. So there we go. Right, so this is now going to go on this side, this chassis rail. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I get it, I want it to be level this way. So if you remember when I fitted this side, I pushed it up to the top. So I'll do the same on this side, push it up to the top. I want it to be square. Okay, so I don't want it to be exaggerated like this. So that when the bumpers go on, they're kind of on an angle. I want it to be square so that everything sits perpendicular. And I want it to be straight. Now I've got a six inch rule here, but 12 inches better. 12 inches is always better than six guys. So basically I can put that along there and I can see that it's straight. I mean, I need to give it a little tweak on the end, but that's not supported anyway. So it's basically the area in between here and here I'm worried about. So that's all nice and straight. Okay, so what you could do now is tape that to that um, straight edge. And then that guarantees you when you put the other side on, it will be nice and straight as well. Um, you can use a six inch rule but you're not getting the full length. And the other problem is it's a lot thinner. It could slit into that gap if you used it on that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this contactor. And I'm just going to put a drop on there, drop on there, drop on there, and a drop on there. And I'm going to kind of tack all this together using that glue. So I can put that like that in there. Okay. And then from the underside, I'm going to put one of these bulldog clamps on it. And then again, I can push this together. I'm pushing it up into the top edge. Like so. So that's gone up in there now. Okay, so I'm pushing that up nice and nice and square. Now I'm not really too worried about twist because this is a fairly flimsy chassis but we want to try and get it as good as we can. So what I'm going to do now, the problem is we've got these lumps here 
and there's no way we're going to use a steel rule underneath. So we have to go for the best we can do and let's just have that on an angle like that. Okay, so that end is still square. So that end, that, that side is still straight. This side is clamped into place. Let's put another clamp in there. What I'll do is put the clamp, that one in there. And I can put the bigger one there. And make sure that clamp is clamping the actual inner frame to the chassis rail, not the chassis rails to itself. So there we go, that's in like that. Right. So just check once again. Yeah, we've got that nice and straight. Now on the back end here, we've got this bumper going on. Now up here is telling us to put lights in. I'm not going to do that until after it's painted. So this is going to slip in. I'm guessing it's not very clear, but I'm guessing these two lugs here are going to slide over the chassis rail. And I need to make sure I've got the right way up. So the springs, the leaf springs are facing up. So then that is going to go in there. And I'll be honest with you, the moulding on this kit is not very impressive. And the fit isn't much better either. So I'm not really over enamoured with it, to be honest. I'm going to take a coarse sanding stick and just go across here. Make sure I get both sides so they're nice and square. And fit that in. That's better. Okay, so now we can take some of our liquid cement. I'll use this um, Mr. Cement SP because we've got a nice big brush. We can get plenty in there. Just like that. Hold that in place for a few seconds just to let it bite. And then we can come along with our rule, hold it against that chassis rail, hold this end of the chassis straight, and we can see. In fact, in this instance, we would be better off with something shorter, I think. And we need to pull it about a bit and get it to true up. Now, what I'm doing now, this is the reason I only use the contact, because it takes a while to dry. It's not going to lock it in place straight away. Now, if I need to square this bumper up, make it perpendicular, I need to kind of slide the chassis rail along that frame. So um, I'm going to do that now off the camera because, to be honest, I've got to stop and go outside because my dog is barking her head off. And uh, you can see on there that when I hold this... When I hold this rule, this is not impossible because of these lumps. But if I hold this rule on here nice and square, you can see it's not particularly square. So I'm going to have to do a bit of maneuverability and pull it all around a bit and twist it all about. And I may even have to cut a little bit off the end of that frame so I can slide it back further. Because the other thing I want to check actually is it could just be that the chassis rail is longer on one side than the other. So We'll also check that for square, the other end for square. Yeah, these things are a pain in the bum. So I think what I'll do is I'll get an even thinner ruler that will sit down in between the chassis rails. And then I can put this one across the end and see if it's square. It looks like it's slightly out. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all. I think we'll leave it like that. And we'll, we'll leave that like that, I think, because that isn't too bad at all. The other thing, of course, we could do is stand it up on that bumper on the end, like so. And then we could get something square like my one, two, three box. Put that there and look at it and check and make sure it's uh, it will look square. So you could put that on the side there. The trouble is with all these lumps and bumps molded on, it makes it very difficult. With a larger scale chassis, all the springs and brackets and that tend to be separate, so it's a lot easier to do. But that everything here is just getting in the way. 
So uh, I'm going to play with this now off camera and then um, I'll come back when I've done something a bit more interesting. Okay and then just one more final thing. I've put some liquid cement and I've clamped it all up and then I've got, you can't basically sit it down on a flat surface because you've got all these lumps and bumps but what you want to know is are these four leaf springs all touching the ground. So what you need to do is raise it off the ground to get it away from all these lumps and bumps. So I'm basically putting those leaf springs centered on there, on that block there, and then I can put those centered on that block there, and I can make sure that there is no wobble. So if I touch this one and it goes down, if I just show you, I can actually make it go out. So I can put that, and when I when I push down there, you can see that is actually let's get it away from that that box there. I think may have been touching so. You can see now when I tap that it's out, so it's sitting on the back two there, but then that one is out. So all I've got to do is give it a twist, give it a tweak while the glue is still soft. Just go back and forwards until you get you're happy that it's uh, it's all right. You've got it's a fairly largeish model and it's a fairly sort of floppy chassis, so. It'll, you can afford to have a little bit of twist. A lot of chassis are very rigid and there's nothing worse than a truck model that has wheels sat up in the air. There is another way to do it. You open up the holes in the wheels so they're sloppy on the axles and then you can get it to go like that. But I always try and get my chassis spot on if I can. So there we go. That now needs to dry and not be messed with at all. The other thing I'm going to do is come along in my instruction manual. Because we're darting around in the instructions, I'm going to cross off the parts that I've used here. So there we go, that's all I've used. And I think what we'll do in a minute, we'll get that front bumper on and we've got an exhaust um, silencer there, we'll get that on as well. And there we go, front bumper all built up, fitted. It's got the silencer on the front with the um, muffler there. Obviously to keep all the, um, any risk of any sparks or heat or whatever away from the fuel so they don't have the, they have the exhaust system coming out the front. Um, something I've done here, a couple of little mods, drill out the end of the exhaust just to make it look a bit better. I'm not really too worried about this seam under here because this on the front is a separate plate anyway. You've got a silencer which is rusty behind a, a sort of black metal plate there. So um, I thought I'll leave that seam and let it just try and depict you know, what should be there. Um, you know, like I said, I could go to town and sort of file that round like the silencer and then make a separate plate. but. That's not what this kit is about. This kit about is about doing a build complete from start to finish. Um, so there we go. That's the front bumper on. I've also thinned the ends out to make him look a bit more realistic because the um, the actual kit is like two tubes and a bit of sheet metal. So the other thing you could do there is come along with some liquid cement and just brush over where you've where you've done any sanding or scraping or anything, and that will actually remove. The, um, any sanding marks or anything or fluffy bits, furry bits, whatever you want to call them. So there we go. So that's that done. So that's the front bumper on. I've also now you can see I've had to stagger my blocks because I want it to sit on all four leaf springs but this battery tray here, whatever it is, is, is fouling on the bottom there I think. So I've just got the block like that so that I know it's not fouling. And there we go. We're all nice and square. So um, that needs to be left now for at least sort of a couple of hours, let it all go hard and solid so we can move on now and start looking at other parts of the model. Okay, here we are, uh, day two now, moving forward. And uh, I've got the cab there. There's a nasty little sprue nib there you need to clean out and there's a recess here and it sort of goes into it. So you've got to do some careful carving. What I always do is with a, a fresh or a fresh-ish blade, one of these round ones, number 10, get in there and just go like that and roll it around and cut it away and uh, that'll get you uh, all in the clear and then once you've got it um, you can get in there at the end of that blade and just lightly scrape and you can take away anything that's remaining so that means your next your, your part is going to fit properly uh, this is all untaped now I need to check about seams here I need to see if there's a seam there on the real thing I don't think there is so we'll get the Mr Servicer out that everyone knows I love so much bit of a step there so we'll have to deal with that anyway um, <clears throat> Fuel tank there, horrible moulding on the ends as you can see, big, big sinks in it and everything so again Mr Surfacer on that. Air tanks, they've cleaned up okay. This plastic is weird, it's really hard to cut 
but when you sand it, it kind of rips it up. It's um, it's very much like the old Ravel plastic that you get like the B-52s made of and stuff. So a bit weird. Axles there, they needed a hell of a lot of cleanup. Loads of flash and stuff on them. So but I've, I've just glued the prop shaft in them just so I can, I can twist it, manipulate it afterwards if I need to. Chassis is all done. I've got some boxes built up and glued onto them. Um, got out of these supports on the rear bumper there. And uh, yeah, all coming along nicely. Um, tires, a uh, bit of a disappointment. Very, very weak. Um, some pretty weak moulding. You can see this one's got a load of sinkage in it. So what I would suggest is look at your tires, get them on off the sprue, and then make sure that with the ones with the sinkage go on the inside at the back. And then you've got your good tires on the outside. So you get a, you know, that, that sinkage tire is, is hidden. The other thing you notice, there's no tread whatsoever, nothing at all. So um, basically what I've done there is I've glued them all together, gone around, sanded them. Then I've gone around with some glue again to clean up the, the sort of the fluffy plastic. So we've got like a shiny surface on there now. And I'm going to try something and I'll show you in a minute what I try to try and um, recreate, recreate some tread. Now this main tank on the back, um, I've gone over with my sprue goo. If you don't know what sprue goo is, basically it's styrene sheet and scrap um, in uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, in an old Extra Thin bottle. And basically you just let it all melt and it makes up a, a goo. Um, it's called sprue goo, but I tend not to use sprue. Um, I've done a couple of videos on it and I've got one in the, in the sidelines waiting now. I'm going to do a beginner's video and I'm going to be getting that out. So, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to come in with something really coarse, like a, this is a 150 Infini Zebra stick. And I'm just going to lightly sand over this now. And uh, basically try and remove the majority of this sprue goo from the surface. Now this stuff has been on here for, I don't know, 18 hours now. So maybe 16 hours. But basically, um, have to remember with sprue goo it does take a while to go off now we can see straight away when I'm sanding what's happening is it's, it's sanding down here and it's sanding down here there's nothing in the middle so we either need to sand away a lot of our tank to get a flat side which means we may well lose some of our shape um, and we also need to do the same on this side because this side is exactly the same it's just sanding along here, look, along there. It's not actually, it's not actually taking anything out of the sprue goo hardly at all. So I think this calls for some filler. Let's see what the ends are like. Again, I'm sanding the ends and you can see I'm not really touching the sprue goo. I'm not really putting any pressure on either guys. I'm just basically sanding over it. Excuse me sniffing, I've got a runny nose this morning. There's a lot of colds about at the moment in the UK. <coughs> there we go. So we can see that that area is a little bit raised. Just going to wipe this on my jeans. There we go, we can see we've got a uh, little bit of a step there. And then when you finish off, go into a circular motion. It gives you a far nicer finish to work with afterwards. So as we can see, everywhere we go, we have got a a low spot around the seam. Which is not good at all.
okay so I'm gonna have to get a lot of filler in here because I don't want to sand away all this plastic um, to end up with a flat side so on here okay with fillers we can use we could use stuff like this plastic putty which I think is absolute garbage uh, we've got our Mr. White putty here which comes in the tube we've got our Tamiya let's just show you a fresh box with your Tamiya putty like this one here there's your light sensitive putty which is they shrink so much they're not really worth using then we've got like an epoxy type which is like a couple of strips you rub together um, and then in addition to that this is something I tend to use now car body filler now if you go into your local shop and buy car body filler it's not the same as this this stuff is fine surface filler and sometimes they call it stopper and it's what they use it's a very very fine I'm get a spreader to show you it's a very very fine filler you can see it's very smooth very creamy right so while that filler is drying which is doing very well um I'm going to do something about the tread on these tires now as I said if you look at them they're just there's nothing to them they've, they've got a little bit of tread around the edge but then they're just flat in the middle and I just want to add something just for a wash or whatever to pick up on just to make them look a little bit more realistic now putting an actual proper tread pattern in there would be an absolute nightmare so all we can do what we can hope for is adding some sort of ridges so what I've done here I've got a saw blade in a vice and the reason it's on an angle is because when I put it down it sits vertically square and I can just use a block just to make sure it is square to the deck and then what I can do is take a take my tire make sure it's face down and not on the back so it's rocking and then I can just hold this hold this vice and then just turn I'm just pushing the tire into the blade and turning it I'm just going to go around a few times And what's happening is the teeth of the blade of the saw blade are cutting grooves into the tire and as you can see we're starting to get some sort of resemblance of lines now as I say it's not at all tidy but it's something it's better than than having nothing there at all so I'm just going to keep going until I get lines all over the surface and then I know I've kind of squared the wheel up then well, there's a better way to do it if you do it so it's pushing into the blade rather than pulling away from it and there we can see we're getting we're getting there let's try a different one hopefully it's a bit more square In fact, that chattering may help with a tread effect because it may put some uh, non-linearity non into it. Is that the word I'm looking for? There we go, you can see there's the, there is the start of something there. Okay, so I'll go and get the rest done and then I'll show you when we're finished. And they're all done so uh, basically you can see now we've got like a a kind of tread represented all the way around there and just to sort of smooth things off I'm going to use this 1500 sanding sponge just go around like that and that will just basically remove any of the sort of fluffiness from the rust sanded earlier but you can see I mean it's not perfect but um, it's no by no means perfect but it's something it's it's better than just having the, the flat nothingness there and then when we put a, a bit of a wash maybe a bit of a, a grey wash or a brown wash or whatever or just a dirty wash then it will uh, it will pick up in those treads mm -hmm. see there's another one there and then the front ones um, again it's just something there because the front ones are quite visible because they sit quite truck sits quite high up so the front tires are quite visible so there you can see we've got the 
the tread around them. It looks terrible at the moment because it's all covered in it's all um, sort of white plastic dust, if you like, or light green plastic dust. It's just a simple little mod that you can do to your to your basic old kit, just to give it a bit more life, really. Okay, so now we'll have a look at doing this um, the sanding on here. Right, so we're going to look at start sanding this, and I'm going to use a, a 100 grit sanding stick. You can see here the kind of finish you get. I've just gone over this, the end of this fuel tank. And um, you can see it's very, very smooth. It dries very quickly. I mean, this is like literally, as long as it took me to do those tires, 15, 20 minutes after I've put it on, it still feels slightly sticky and it does for ages. But I found that once you break through the surface, it's fine. You need a dust mask. Um, you really don't want to be breathing this in. It's the same as resin and stuff. So I'm going to have to talk now through a dust mask. And hopefully you can still hear me. But um, <clears throat> basically, just going to come on out of the stick, sand through here. As you can see, it makes a lot of dust. We just want to get the basic shape and remove the remove as much roughness as we can from the filler. And then we can use the flatness of the stick to just come along here. And once we see the plastic starting to appear on the edges there, then we know we can stop. Okay, so put the 100 stick down, get a 150. As you can see on the end here, we've got the, the fillers a bit thicker. And there we go, and that is very, very smooth. Now I'm not too worried about scratching the plastic up here, because the finish needs polishing anyway. Remember I showed you just now, it's got that very grainy finish on it. So we just take the filler away from there. Be careful not with your standard stick not to start hitting all this detail because because it's a, a coarse sand it'll just knock that detail off straight away. There we go. Now I've got a fifteen hundred. Here's a. I can't which one this is. I think this is like a two hundred grit. And there we go, and that'll just soften it up. And there we go, now we're all done. I can feel a little bit of a divot there still. But that is ready, and I can get some Mr. Surfacer on it, and then we'll be ready with some um, with some fine sanding, and then the ends. Get a circular motion. Just going to come in there. Like so. And then with our sponge, 1500 sponge, give it a clean up. And then we can come around the corners. In fact, I'll use like a, this is an 800 grit sponge, just to clean the corner up, put a bit of a radius on it. And there you go. So, and then this plastic here, where it's all grainy, you can see this grainy finish on it. I've got an 800 grit sponge here, I'm just going to go over it and blend it, like so. You can see that grainy finish has gone already. So 
So there's our tank. Pretty much ready for primer. And there you are. Okay, so you can see sprue goo in there and body filler and I can still feel some little lumps in the middle so it still needs a bit more work but you get the general idea it's so quick and easy just to put this on sand it back you know, and you're not waiting forever for it to dry and you also know that once it has dried it won't sink back like most of your other things will as soon as you start putting any sort of quantity on there There we go. And there we are guys, so that's that all done, as I say ready for primer, bit of a ridge there, this side is fine, so I'm just going to grab the coarsest stick, so basically when you find a bit of a lump, grab your coarsest stick and with no pressure just rub over it, it may take it off, that's a lot smoother.
because the trouble is when you're sanding you've got the plastic you've got your screw goo and you've got your filler and when you've got three different mediums which are all different hardnesses when you sand it it's very difficult to get it flat unless you use coarse and no pressure so let's come again no pressure then again no pressure we're just breaking it back and then a final polish with a 1500 sponge yeah, it's still something there but um, anything that's there on now will come away with primer okay so sorry if that was a little bit boring for you but it's good for beginners to see how to uh, you know how you can use filler and stuff and not sort of sand all your model away when you're trying to get rid of seams we can see we've got like a low area there, a low area there, all along there is low. Big low area there. The ends are actually quite good, there's a bit of low area there. But, um, you know, like I say, you don't have to just sand the living deluxe out your model. And as I say, the, the, the biggest enemy here is heat. If you start sanding and you start to feel heat, stop. It means you're pushing too hard. And what will happen is the plastic is starting to melt, soften, and it, you won't get it flat while it's soft. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a few minutes, and then we'll get some primer on there. Alright, so as I said, I won't be showing you everything, but I will show you a few bits and pieces as I go. So, these have had their Mr. Servicer on them now, and then the joints have been sanded, all nice and smooth. I've gone round and scribed in the doors because the doors just have a little line here a little line there and a set so i've gone around and scribed in the actual door lines and also there was no um, line down there although there is a line down that side and there's some mold lines all around the front here and there was no seam here so if you are building this and you want it to look at you know <clears throat> half decent then go around and scribe them and yeah if you want to look half decent do a better job than i did this plastic is extremely difficult to scribe it's very hard so the, the scriber just wants to skate over it so um yeah be a little bit careful there put some more mr servicer in there i've noticed there's not a seam but there is a separate panel there so i may just put a piece of 10 thou plastic card there or something just to add a bit of interest and then um i don't think there's anything down this side but reference photos for this are very far and few between so as you know i did the um primer and the mr servicer and i rubbed that down and then this has had a coat of MRP fine surface primer the grey one which is brilliant stuff other than it stinks um, and the bottle's awful so what I'm going to do now is with a hard stick I don't want to use I'm going to use this one this is 800 it's quite worn out so although it says 800 it's more like a thousand if you go in there with a sponge any undulations or whatever will just it'll just sand over them so basically, basically for the less experienced modelers among us let me just show you something if you've got a surface like this and you sand it with a sponge the sponge will conform to that shape and you'll end up with something like that okay whereas if you've got a surface like this and you're going with a hard sponge it can only take it down it can't get in in between the nooks and crannies so it will make it flat so in other words, it will always show up your high spot. So I believe on this side, I've got a high spot. When, it was, when the paint was glossy, it looked like it had a high spot. So I've got this 800 stick, keeping it flat, going like a circular motion. And I'm just going to very lightly sand. There we go. That's that coming out now. Yeah, I did have a high spot so just gently sanding not pushing down but just letting the, the sand stick do the work and it will just level everything out for me now I don't know if this is still spoogoo or the actual seam itself moving um, I'm not really sure why I've got that high spot there but I think what I have to do is leave this for another 24 hours now before I do anything with it and then what I will do is come back and give it another cut of primer and do this again you can see on this side it's pretty much flat so we've got a nice seamless join on that side 
and then on the ends we should have the same. Notice I'm going in circles so that I keep an even pressure. If I start to go like this I'm likely to round off the ends. If you want to sand something square the best thing to do is just go one way. It saves you from actually doing this kind of thing. And if your sand is sticks can take it you could always wet them. I don't think these can but these the matador sticks you can wet them. Now this is a 7000 grit so just put a bit of moisture on there. You can feel it cut when it's wet. That's going to polish that out. And it will probably put a bit of a shine on this primer. Maybe got to get something a bit coarser. Now this is a 2000 grit. These things are amazing. These are the Infini Matadors. Um, I'd recommend them to anyone. They are incredible. You can use them wet. You can wash them off. Um, the edges don't seem to tear up on them. They uh, they really are good. And if you're in the UK, you can get them from Premium Hobbies. I don't know if you can see it there. Yes, you can. This guy here, Ed, down in Western Supermare, Premium Hobbies. And say the code NMB10, Nigel's Mother Minch 10, and you get 10% off. So even the sale items that have already got money off, you'll get another 10% off. So uh, it's worth knowing. And he's got pretty much the full range of Infini sanding products. And he also does these nifty little holders. I can't remember if I already showed you this, but that's a holder for all the different products. Really handy. If I showed you that a few minutes ago, I'm sorry, but for me it's um, a few hours ago. Well, it's a day ago for me. So using a sponge now to polish the plastic and just blend that primer in on the edge. Then we can do the same here on the lower edge. Not that we really need to. Just blend that in there. And I'll tell you what, I could probably take all these bits out of this video and make this into a segment on dealing with seams. Now we can see we've got a little bit of a shiny line there. Now I'm not sure if that's a sink mark. Sorry about the knock in. One of my neighbours is doing some maintenance. And there we go. I'm happy with that. That's going to get another coat of primer now and then we'll uh, leave that for 24 hours and see how it goes. Right so here we are a couple of seconds but actually it's about 36 hours so well about 36 hours 24 hours so if you remember we had this little sink mark in here you can see I've put some Mr Surfacer over it and that's been on there as I say for about 24 hours so now we need to sand that out. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to use an Infini matador stick this is a 400 which is quite worn out you need something hard don't use something soft and then you need to just sand away gently and not put any pressure on and you just want to keep going until that blends in with everything around it okay if you if you come with something soft you can see you've got a line between the plastic and the filler there you'll end up with um with a line there so basically you just want to sand this away in fact this stick is actually completely clogged up or worn out but um let's try the 600 doesn't get so much use yeah the 600 is actually coarser so we can just sand away there and what we're doing is just blending in and getting everything leveled out so I can't feel anything now but we'll just keep going and there we go and I'm just going to come along with a this should be a thousand grit sponge and just run along the edges just to blend out in case I put a corner on there by using a, a flat sander we just want to sort of radius those edges in so there we go so that's that done now we're not out of the woods yet 
we still need to we've still got a little bit more sanding there to do um, we need to wait and see if this shrinks anymore I think we'll be okay and this is going to have like a semi gloss finish on it anyway so you know, even if there is something there it'll look like a dent rather than an imp imperfection in the plastic the biggest ob objective was to get rid of that nasty seam um, and you can see I've also got some in there on this side I'd forgotten I had it on that side so we use the 600 again and just lightly go over come around the radius again we need a hard flat stick don't go using any sponges or anything and this applies to anything you're doing fuselages like this tank everything you you do that's um that's flat and you're trying to get rid of seams And as I say, with these matadors, you can actually use them wet if you want to. A lot of sanding sticks fall apart if you get them wet, but not these. there we go so you can see we had some sink marks there as well so basically um, this could carry on sinking so we'll just basically leave, leave the painting until the very end and make sure we uh, make sure we capture anything that sinks so there's also been a little bit of movement around here by the look of it and I think I mentioned it before, just in case I didn't, this is the issue with using sprue goo. It does tend to uh, move around for a few days. And there we go. Okay, so moving swiftly on here, it's been like a nanosecond for you and this is like 24 hours for me. But um, basically you can see we've got the tank sat on the chassis with the wheels just clipped on and everything is basically just roughly placed into position so looking good um talk about the tank in a second this unit here as i say though getting rid of these seams there is a panel here i'm just thinking i needn't have bothered with all this because i'm going to put a, a strip of plastic over it anyway so uh yeah never mind um back of the cab is glued on now um that is not a very good fit the cab on mine was all sort of um sort of squash so it was this kind of shape so i had to bend it all back into shape and then hold it all together with tape and everything beautiful fit the interior i've put the dashboard and that together this is a beautiful fit in here you can basically clip that in there like so like so yeah okay and that will just sit there on its own and we, we don't need to glue the cab on um, and then basically just a little pull on the wheel arch and it will come out just like that so um, that's a nice touch. So we can get in here now, we can deal with this seam here, we can paint all around in here, then we can put the glazing in. Um, in fact, no, we won't bother putting the glazing in, we'll paint everything first, and then we'll pop the glazing in afterwards, because the windscreen and the rear screen going from the inside, the side windows going from the outside, and I'm not sure they're going to look very nice. So we shall see. I may actually put some acetate inside and have the main windows open, and just put some acetate in these core lights. We shall see. Um, the chassis um, basically glued the axles on using blocks and stuff and making sure everything stays kind of uh, parallel we end up with all our wheels touching the ground which is a good thing um, that's something you, that one of the most important things I think I always mention this in truck models and stuff all the wheels must touch the ground to give the thing um, an appearance of, of actual weight rather than um, having one wheel just sat up in the in the air like a begging dog you know you want all wheels on the ground uh, if you do get to this stage and you have got a wheel just teetering and you can't twist the chassis or whatever what I would do say it was this wheel here that was up or this wheel this well this wheel here was up I would take these front wheels drill them out so they're loose on the axles put some glue on them put some blocks up against them or something keep them nice and parallel and let them set on a dead flat surface and that way then the wheels will be they'll be slightly off with the axle but it's better to have that than to have one wheel sat up in the air so there we go so that's all those done um back wheels fit on without even any glue in them the front wheels aren't so tight but um yeah really really nice 
um, the way it's gone together. Air tanks, fuel tank steps all done now, you can see all glued on. Um, fit of those has been not very good at all. And as you can see, we had some edge edge wear on here or work to be done on those edges. So dealt with that now. Um, but other than that, yeah, of course, the other thing you could do is if you have got a wheel sat up in the air, you could come along with everything glued up, absolutely solid and dry, piece of wet and dry, sandpaper, whatever, flat on the bench, and then just gently circular motion, rub it away and you'll rub away the tires. So um, I'm, I may do that anyway to get a little bit of a flat spot on them. So uh, there we go. So that's that. Now, fuel tank. Um, as I said, this could almost be a standalone video for uh, seam filling. If you remember, I used some sprue goo in this seam. OK, and there were two areas here where we had sink marks where the location pins are. And I don't know if you can see it in the light, but this is like 48 hours since that sprue goo went on. I don't know if I can catch it in the light, but there is a low spot. There's a low spot here, definitely. Um, I don't know if I can catch it in the light. But basically, this is where using the solvent based products is a problem if you're after a perfect seam. I mean, that will just look like a dent, but I'm going to go over it with Mr. Servicer anyway and sand it back. Um, but that is the problem. Mr. Prugu will sink back over a number of days. And, and this is the thing, and this is why I said at the start of this video, look for your major assemblies, put your major assemblies together, deal with the seams, put them to one side and get on with the rest of your build. You know, stuff like aircraft, um, engine nacelles, fuel tanks, um, wheels and tires, you know, wing halves, tailplane halves, control services like your rudder and your, and your elevators and everything, glue them together, put them to one side. And then they can be all going hard while you're building the rest of the model. Um, unfortunately, you know, with a lot of larger scale kits, you've got a lot of work to do internally with cockpits and nose bombing gears and all that before you get to glue the fuselage together. But then you want to be dealing with those seams on the fuselage, leaving them, letting them set, let them dry, let them do their sinking and then deal with it. The worst thing you can do is go piling into a build do all your filling, do all your sanding, get it all nice and level, paint it, come back a week later and you've got a line there where it's all sunk back. So um, that using this um, car body filler will also help with that one because it doesn't, it, it tends to dry much quicker. So um, anyway, I'm going to put some Mr. Servicer over there. I mean, if I can catch that in light, you can really see there where it's sunk. If I can get to focus. There you go. You can see there where it's sunk. It's only where that sprugu was that it's sunk. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to put some Mr. Surface over that now, leave that to dry, and then we'll rub that back and just keep going, really, to get this a perfect flat side. And then we can get, just like it is on the front of the box, we can get this nice side here with the decals and everything looking lovely. And then when it's had a gloss coat on it and those decals are all blended in, um, it's going to look really, really nice. Right, so still moving forward, um, you can see now everything is black and the reason for that is I wanted to give everything a coat of black primer and something that's going to bite and key into the plastic and for that I've used MRP Fine Surface Primer, MRP 085, available from here if you're in the UK, Premium Hobbies, um, you'll get a, a bottle of this from them and if you use my code NMB10 you get 10% off as I think I mentioned already. So. You have to understand when you do these videos what you're watching might be a uh, an hour and 15 minutes but what i'm producing is over from I mean, this is day three now so what i said three days ago is only like 20 minutes ago to you but you know so sometimes we make these videos and tend to repeat ourselves so um it, it, i was gonna say cockpit then the interior now is all is all done with this um fine surface primer the cab, I've done it with, with this fine surface primer so I can check all my scribing. I can see we've got a sink mark there and a sink mark there, although it may be a, a mark to put a light in place. No, it is actually a sink mark, so I think I'll probably deal with that, get rid of that, get rid of those sink marks. So you can see them on the corner of the fenders there. There's one there and there's one there. Um, don't quite know why they're there, but... Um, I guess there's some thick plastic behind this 
recessed area here so Mr. Surfacer in there to get rid of that and that's the thing that didn't show up on the plastic but once you put the primer on you'll see all sorts and we can see here where I've scribed around the doors and um, that's all neat and tidy so I'm happy with that so that's that this area here you can see underneath here we've got the Mr. Surfacer um, there is some imperfections in it but I think I'm probably going to put a plate over this anyway but we shall see I may just put some more Mr. Surfacer and then sand that back get that looking lovely the actual tank itself as we saw a little while ago all the sides all done now um, we can see there's an area there which is shiny um, but it is literally just shiny the thing is with these five surface primers they kind of bite into the surface so they will kind of look different over different media so we've got this I think here is plastic then we've got the filler there and then we've got some mister surface here and here so you will see a difference but once that's covered with green paint you won't notice it gone over the top here I had lots of dust and fluff in there unfortunately which I'll need to uh, sand out so I can just come along with a here's a 1500 sponge just gently sand over that and there we go all gone so you can see it's 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 that simple um, and there's your preparation for your for your next coat then um, and then we've got the chassis here which is all done again all black I've gone over it very quickly so there's areas that are missed and I've basically just done this just to give the the, the following coats a key I will probably do this with x18 semi-gloss black from Tamiya heavenly thinned um, and then start doing some masking and painting the areas that need to be green I think this toolbox area is green these are no stay black um, but you know you can also see that you know we've got seams everywhere I wanted to check that they're all okay you've got seams around the middle of that fuel tank you can see on the ends there where we put the filler that's all sorted and lovely now okay so you can just see the filler under there but um, yeah nice and smooth uh, this fender actually I don't know if I mentioned it, it actually broke I had, the fenders were too closed up so I had to sort of spread them out and this one just snapped it's got a you can see it's got a weak spot in there there's a gap um, but uh, yeah on the whole going together nicely right moving forward we've got painted wheels now and these are masked with discs of masking tape cut with a circle cutter so we can just push that masking tape in there and then we should be able to grab the edge of it this is basically the wheels are 304 olive drab from uh, Mr Hobby and then I've gone over with a semi-gloss varnish from MRP um, haven't used this stuff before but it's uh, it goes down really really nice um, be using that all over it and then for the front wheels here because they're convex in shape it's very difficult to mask them so I've used blue tack and what I just put the blue tack on make a blue tack disc push it down and then just push the edges in with a with a um, cocktail stick and on one of them I've got a rim of yeah this one I've got a ring of masking tape which I tried and hasn't worked very well um, but we can see there that that's been uh, that's that that's looking okay and then on the back we've got the the tape disc here I should be using my new tweezers that I showed you shouldn't I which um, don't stick to the tape so there we go that's our that's our wheels all done so a bit of careful masking and they can we can make them look lovely right moving forward still with this build um, just a little thing here the windows you can see in this kit they actually fit into the cab from the outside these side windows now I've looked at some reference photos online and it does look as though you can almost see it in these pictures here it looks as though these windows are actually kind of bonded into the cab very much like you see on the back of modern minibuses and stuff so um, what I've done is painted them on the inside now to get a tidy look um, here's here's some I prepared earlier blue Peter style unprepared blue Peter style so there's the front quarter lights there so what I've done they're stuck to masking tape and what I've done is masked off the actual window and then painted the frame so um and I've used acrylic paint so if I make any mistakes I can basically just rub it off with a cocktail stick so here you can see we've we basically these are the side windows I don't know why I didn't do them at the same time probably because I'm going crazy so then the uh, the side windows here and I've used this one this Vallejo mask um, 
you need to be careful. If you've dipped your clear parts in future, it will attack them, uh, I think. So basically what I've done here is the, these are just plain plastic, so they'll be okay. If you do dip your clear parts, if you use this one, I think this one's absolutely fine. So um, there we go. Uh, so all we've got to do now is just get this and just pick it up and just pull it off like so. You can see on here, this will just come away. Now, I'm not sure the routine this is going to go in because I don't know when this is going to get actually finished. But I am about to start a beginner series uh, building a B-52. So um, if you are new to the hobby and you want to pick up lots of little hints and tips uh, for beginners or even, you know, some silly little things we learn along the way that we, we just take for normal and other people think, oh, that's a good idea, you know, I never thought we're doing it that way. And uh, yeah, modelling is one of those things. You can certainly learn something every day. So uh, always worth a watch if, you're, uh, if you've got nothing else on. But um, I don't tend to make the videos like people like Plasma and stuff do where I just have music on and do 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 finished. You know, I don't do that. I shake cocktail sticks all over the place. Um, I, I tend to, um, my video videos tend to be a lot more detailed. Uh, my biggest fault is not finishing stuff which I get told quite often and uh, get told aggressively sometimes and that that results in people being blocked so um, here we go so we can just scrape that off of there it really does stick very well compared to the um, compared to the Mr Hobby stuff so uh, if it's fragile parts you've got probably better off sticking with the Mr Hobby stuff so there we go so that's those, those windows done so when we look at the back side of them if I can get one off the tape so if I can peel this away, let me look at the back side of it. You can see we've got a very neat black frame on there. So now we can try this in the cab, and I believe the thicker line goes at the bottom. So basically, that's going to go like that. So when we've got the green paint on the cab, we're going to get a lovely demarcation between the. Um, between the uh, the glass and the actual um, part itself, so they're going to need a polish as well. In fact, I might even give them a dip because they're quite scratchy. I mean, I don't believe I've scratched it with this cocktail stick because it's not hard enough. But um, let's just see if we get a cotton bud. We may be able to just give it a little polish. Yeah, it's some remnants of that. Um, stuff left on there and also the remnants of the glue so it should look a lot better now but as I say if it's um, looking dodgy we can always give it a polish so is that looking better now yeah I think it is so uh, there we are so that's a, a little tip for doing your, your windows particularly on this kit it's very unusual to have windows like that um, generally they would have a like a rubber frame around the outside and it actually looks like to me from what I can see it looks like with this model the they they couldn't actually wind the window doors up the door windows up and down very strange I can't find a picture with the windows down and it looks like the glazing is kind of glued in the other thing I've done is I've done all the clear lights and everything you've got the these little tiny orange bits they're the marker lights that go around the cab here as you can see there uh, and then we've got some there on the side and we've got the headlights and the um, indicators. There's no indicators on the back. If you look at the pictures of the rear, all we've got is like uh, um, red lights, uh, reflectors and uh, reversed lights. I don't know if that's something up there, but it's, if it is, it's missing from the kit. So, <clears throat> but there we go. There's our rear lights there. There's our reflectors. And we've got our front indicators there. And all I've done there is painted them silver and then sprayed them, painted them silver on the back and then sprayed them with um, Tamiya Clear Red and Tamiya Clear Orange. And you get quite a nice, quite a nice effect like that. If you spray them on the outside with the orange, then you actually see orange when you look through them. If you paint them red or orange from behind, when you look sideways, you just see clear. So, uh, and also on this rear step thing, there's one here which I painted the back a bit silver. You can't really see it shining through, but... Um, so there we go. So I have to mask those off now and then paint around that with the with the olive drab. So there we go. That's another step towards completion. The chassis, um, as you can see here, is painted all over in satin black. Now, the front and rear bumpers, 
um, this box here and this box here need to be painted green. We've got fire extinguishers here and here which need to be painted yellow and I want, sorry to put red, yellow, red. So I'll paint them white first and then, well I might paint them yellow first and then red. And then we've got these, this here, reel here has got some yellow on it as well so I need to get some white on there and then some yellow. So um, basically what I'm going to do, I, I started to mask the um, the chassis up to paint the bumpers but it's going to be much easier to just paint the bumpers green, let that dry, mask the bumpers and then redo the black because basically trying to get all in out these nooks and crannies and, and mask everything up here to prevent it from getting green paint is a lot of work so not quite sure what to do on the back. The instructions kind of show that the chassis should be green um, but I want it black because these are gloss black. I'm going to put a gloss varnish on these because they are if you look in the images they're very very shiny um, we can see on this one here, these are all images on the side of the box I'm showing you. You can see on here that fuel tank there is very shiny indeed. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to put some gloss varnish on them. I'm going to paint these green and I'm going to paint the bumpers green. Then once that's dry, I'll mask off. So that's going to have to be like 18 hours because one of the downsides with this Mr. Hobby paint, it does take a longer time to dry than... Um, than Tamiya but if you play with your models or if you know the radio control whatever it is a lot more hardware and this is a really tough paint once it's down and dried it really is uh, it's good stuff so um let me get all that done I think what I'll probably do is just paint these paint the cab give the tank its first coat and then we'll go from there we have greenness there we go we can see the, uh, the bumpers are done now they're green done these two tanks or the two boxes uh, this one I managed to touch before the paint went off, so I'm hoping, when I can see mould marks in there, or machining marks where they machine the mould, I'm hoping that's going to settle down and cover up with some um, coats of varnish. Um, done the cab, as you can see, that's going to be left to dry now, and that'll be all sorted. And then this here, um, you can see I've painted this tank, but if we look down the sides, I can catch it in the light, you can see witnesses there. Get the camera in focus. You can see witnesses there of the join line. See it there where it's been sinking. So, some more work to do on there, and then also on the end here we can see it. Okay, now if this was matte, you probably wouldn't see it, but because it's going to be semi gloss, it needs to be done. Unfortunately, the front end that won't be seen at all is nigh on perfect. I mean, you can just see a witness there, but this side's pretty good too. So, uh, I'll let that go off, and then I'm going to give this a sand back with two and a half thousand grit and um, just basically try and sort of level it all out. Uh, I don't know if it's because of this awful plastic or what but it just doesn't seem to stop moving around. Um, this this plastic is horrible. It's horrible to scribe, it's horrible to sand, um, the moulding is, is really horrible. It's really not a very nice kit at all this one. Um, the fit isn't so bad but uh, it's very brittle. Um, everything is you know you generally you get your drafts on your mold tools everything's really chunky and it's all been had a lot of carving and sanding and stuff loads of flash uh, well not so much flash just massive mold seams um, mismatch on the mold tools yeah it's like a it's like a sort of 1960s old Ravel kit it's just yeah the details are not bad um, but you know like for instance the door scribing that just stopped there didn't carry on round um, that line there on the back of the hood I've had to add because that wasn't actually moulded in. As you know there were sink marks up in here which I've had to deal with. It's just, um, you know, it's not very nice but it is such a beautiful thing when it's finished. It's such a lovely subject. Uh, I've just noticed those scribe lines need sorting around there as well but I think I'll probably just leave them rather than um, just keep giving work to myself. So uh, yeah, those windows are going to look good when they're sat in there I hope. So um, there we go. All right, moving on now. Um, <clears throat> another sort of three or four days later, while all this paint's been drying and everything, and I just want to show you something. On here, we can see. If I catch it in the light, we can see where those sink marks were. The get to get to focus. You can see we've got some marks have come back. Two weeks. It's now two weeks since that's been done, and it's still playing up. I've had enough. I'm just going to leave it like that. What we'll do is we'll weather it and we'll cover them up with some rain streaks or something. I've also got an unusual mark turned up here. I don't know what on earth that is. Um, 
it's like a fingerprint but it's too small of an area and you can see that I've gone over with a, a 2500 grit um, stick and I've just basically gone over and just denibbed to the the surface just to level it out a bit because it was a little bit orange peely and we want to put the decals on so if you if you have a nice smooth surface they'll go down good um, it doesn't necessarily need to be really glossy it just needs to be very smooth so you don't want a sort of grainy finish on there and that'll avoid us getting any um any silver i've also done the same on the cab I've just gone round and just you know removed any bits and pieces there so next thing we're going to do now is these fire extinguishers there's one on each side and basically what I've done, I've masked off these tanks which are painted green and I've also just roughly masked the, the, um, the chassis. Now I'm going to paint these fire extinguishers. First I'm going to paint them with the yellow. I'm going to use XF3, purely flat because it will dry faster. Uh, and then I'm going to go over them with an X7 red. Um, yellow first because yellow is or white is a really good base for red. If I just painted them red, it would take forever. You need, you need to put something light on first. So... What we'll do is we'll get them painted and then when they're painted and everything's dry and hard and everything we can mask off the chassis and uh, we'll mask off the bumpers and um, paint the chassis again i've also put a gloss coat on these because they're glossy in real life so we need to mask them up as well and then we'll give the chassis a, a, a touch up with some x18 tamia so that's that done and then in the meantime while these are dry and we'll go on and do some decaling so i'm um, just gonna I've had a couple of people suggest that I'd show more painting on my videos. So I've got my little Iwata um, Evolution BR, Revolution, sorry, Revolution BR airbrush here, which is years old. Um, yellow in there, I've got the XF3, roughly 50-50 with Tamiya X20A thinners, so it's not too smelly. Um, and I'm just going to find something here to test, so I've got a bit of paper, and we'll just test our... Test how flow, check it's alright, it's not all spattery and spitting and everything. So we're going to go very, very lightly. In fact, I'll get this out of the way, otherwise it's going to get covered in over spray. So we'll just go very, very lightly over. And just very slowly build the colour up. We don't want any puddling or pooling or anything. I guess the inside isn't that important because it's never going to be seen. But if you follow my channel, you know I don't tend to sort of fuss about what's not being seen. I tend to um, enjoy the whole hobby really and, and enjoy making models which is you know doing cockpits and stuff that don't get seen. Yep fine, enjoy doing the cockpit. Some say it's not what you can see, it's what you know is there and uh, that's what I tend to live by. There we go. And I'll just continue like this and get it until it's all bright yellow. Right, here we are a couple of hours later. Done the yellow, done the red, got the gloss red on there. Um, as you can see, I've removed the masking from the chassis. I've masked the front and the rear bumpers up. So now we can go on and just blow the uh, chassis in again and get the um, get rid of the green. Uh, I've also done some decals. I want to show you this though. Look at this. Is this the worst decal guide you've ever seen? I mean, you, you can see it just says the number and where it goes. It doesn't actually show the deck. You can see with these diamonds here, it's got them in position and with these little white squares and everything. But the actual main decals, it doesn't show you where they go. It's just a, it's just a blotch. It's all just black and white printed mess. Really. <laughs> and um, it's just like the painting guy that we had mentioned this in the review. Look at that. Unbelievable. So, um, yeah, so most of the decals are on now. We've got the, um, the tank is done. With the, you can see there's a lot of carrier film on them, but once we've got a gloss focus, come on. Once we've got a gloss varnish, you can see I've got a finger mark there in the paint. Oh no, it's, it's a, 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 an oily finger mark. Um, so yeah, I'll get a wash down afterwards to remove any um, residue. And then we'll um, give it a couple of coats of gloss to sort of blend them in, to, to hide them if you like. And then it'll get a, a semi-gloss over that. Got the little marker decals on there. And we've got a few little marker decals on the on the cab as well. So coming along nicely, starting to um starting to take shape now. As a model that was I thought, I thought was going to take me a couple of days, um, <laughs> it's just gone on and on and on really. Anyway, okay, so uh, a lot's happened since uh, our last viewing. So it's had a couple of coats of clear aqua gloss, and then been rubbed down again. And as you can see. 
the decals are now kind of blending in and once we've got um, a semi matte varnish on there I don't think they'll show at all I've got a couple of air bubbles under the decals there I'm not going to worry about um, and you can see where I've sanded them I've sort of worn through a bit on the top edge and it's one good way of kind of making things look a little bit worn if you just get a, like this is a what's this a 2000 grit and you just lightly sand your decals and, and until you start to see them sort of wearing away and it kind of adds a it, it's like a kind of, you can see there another white's appearing through it's kind of as the sun would bleach them and stuff and whatever um i also intend to add some rain marks and stuff and staining on it uh, i had a bit of an issue with the bonnet i had some dust on here i was sanding it and i went through to the black so i had to paint that again you can see this has had a gloss coat over all these little marker decals and everything we have painted the seats gray i used a, a revell like gray thinned with water i've also given the dashboard as you can see here in the light a very very light dry brushing with a silver um, that is totally unauthentic but when you look inside through the window rather than just being a black blob it'll actually give you something to look at you're not going to see much in there at all because the window apertures are quite small and the clear parts aren't that good um the chassis now what i did as you know we masked off and we, we painted the um fire extinguishers i've gone over and fitted all these little marker decals on here and the little marker decals on the end of the bumper and there's a warning hot surface there for the exhaust and then obviously where they've gone I've given them a gloss coat so basically now I need to go around and get rid of that white mark there whatever that is I don't know what it is there we go um, and basically now give this a semi in fact we need to give the whole thing a coat of semi gloss varnish just to sort of tone it down a bit and then leave that a little while to dry um, this is going on for days and days and days. I can't remember if I showed you, but here's the mirrors. I actually um, black gloss and then aqua gloss or sorry, um, Alclad chrome on the mirrors and it gives a kind of a kind of mirror effect. I mean, you can see the reflection of my finger in it there. So it gives you a kind of half decent effect. Um, and then we've got the rear ladder here, which was sprayed green. Remember, I masked off the amber uh, marker lights sprayed it green and then I brush painted Viejo uh, silver paint on there and that's going to basically sit on the back like that but I'm not going to fit it until the very end because it's going to get knocked otherwise and these little bars on the top are going to be very fragile so we'll keep those fragile parts in their part and their box out of the way so they don't get damaged so now I need to give it a coat of semi-gloss varnish I was going to use the MRP um super clear what's this this is a matte so they've got a matte then they've got a semi gloss and they've also got a semi matte and i don't quite know what the difference is i was going to use this but today the weather's not very nice so i don't really want the window open um and i need to definitely use extraction so i will probably be using the tamiya x35 semi gloss clear i'll thin it heavily um and see how it goes down and uh, hopefully it'll be a nice sort of fairly smooth surface i don't want it to be all stipply and um you know um orange peely so i'll get a coat of this on now and then i'll be back right now you're looking from above so you can't really see a lot but um we've basically we're nearly there uh you can see there we've got the the truck up together it's amazing the difference in color on the camera uh so um so yeah, the rear end is done. I put the the uh, light on there. There's the uh, spotlight, and we have got the ladder on there with the with the lights in between. It's had its coat of um, semi gloss varnish, as you can see. Then we've got this box here that's had the light fitted as well. Um, that's also had a coat of semi gloss varnish. The cab has had all the marker lights added along the roof and here. They're all held in place with them. Um, with micro crystal clear this product here which i'd recommend to anyone um what i might do is give this another coat of satin varnish and then pick out those with gloss varnish because that will sort of seal them in and because i think if you touch them they would just fall off there's such a small contact area and also of course they're painted on the front they're painted orange and on the back they're painted silver so if, if you like them it's really only glued to a coat of paint but if i give them a good good heavy coat of uh of a semi-gloss varnish that should help to sort of seal them in these on here are prone to getting knocked off as well 
Um, the mirrors, I've painted them, they're in there, hand painted them. So they're all looking lovely, ready to go on after the glazing. Obviously you've got to fit the glazing, but I'm not going to fit the glazing until I definitely know what I'm doing. The Obviously I've put the wheels on loosely, the front ones will fall off, that would stay on. But we've got the rear lights in and everything as well. There are decals to go over those rear lights, they fit terribly. Um, awful. This thing is fighting me all the way to be honest. Uh, I think if I do another one of these um, all in one videos, you know, start to finish weathering everything. I think I'll do something like a Tamiya kit because at least it'll be straightforward. Um, but this has been fighting me all the way. It's partly my fault with all the, the, the paint and all the, the, the um, sprue goo and the, and the filler and everything I used. So um, that fought me. But the, the, the fit and stuff is just, it's like fitting this. There's absolutely no location for it whatsoever. And the same with this one here. There's no location. There's supposed to be a part that goes on here that looks like a horn. Um, or a siren of some sort, I don't know, but it's just a horribly moulded, flashy piece of plastic, so I'm not going to put it on there. It looks bloody awful. So um, we're pretty much ready to start building it all up together once I've decided what I'm going to do about this uh, varnish. So I think what I might do, I need to do some detail painting on this varnish thing, which is, well, paint the hoses and um, perhaps a bit of silver somewhere as well, just to sort of give them a bit of interest. So uh, see you in a minute. Oh, the other thing I've done here, I gave these a, a wash with a um, Tamiya paint, you know, you know, water-based, and I just gave them a wash and I rubbed it off with a cotton bud, and it's kind of given them a bit of bit of a texture, so that when you look in there, you'll see something other than just grey. So um, yeah, I'll decide what I'm going to do now about this um, this cab with these with these marker lights, and then we'll go from there. Right. So I said this was fighting me all the way, and I did paint the roof to see all those lights in, and I don't know if you can see it on there, but the paint actually wrinkled up. So I went over it with X35 semi-gloss varnish thinned with um, Mr. Color leveling thinners and that's exactly what was underneath it and it attacked it. So I don't know. It does seem to be flattening out a bit as it, as it goes hard but uh, anyway. So I fitted all the glazing. Uh, windscreen isn't a very good fit at all but everything else is really good. Uh, really nice fit in there. Um, as you can see I've put gloss varnish on all those little lights now. And basically, we have no windscreen wipers. I believe they must be tucked down behind the bonnet. These side windows appear to be kind of bonded in from the outside. But the glazing, as you can see, is pretty nasty. So um, I've got the mirrors on, as you can see. So we're pretty much there now. It's just a case of final assembly, really. Um, I thought something else had gone wrong. When you actually put the cab on, uh, when you get the cab in place on the chassis, the wheels as you can see, sit pretty far back in the wheel arches. But then when I looked at the real thing, that's how it is. So uh, I thought I was going to have to start cutting the axle off again and stuff and going for that. But um, anyway, uh, so all I've got to do now is basically put it all together and do some weathering or do some weathering and then put it all together. I haven't yet decided. I'm not going to play with it anymore today. I'm going to leave it now for today and, um, and just I don't know, have a beer or something because uh, this I've been on this nearly all day. Like I say, this was supposed to be a quick build and there's probably 40 hours in this, I'd say. Um, there's a lot, a lot of work gone on. Obviously, I had a lot of work off camera, but this wasn't supposed to be a how to build it. This was supposed to be about how I did it. But um, yeah, I don't think I'll bother another, another one of these kits. But it's, it's not... Uh, it's not very good at all, but um, it looks okay and I think it'll look great after it's been uh, toned down with a bit of weathering and stuff. So, um, see you in a minute. Okay then guys, here we go, a big jump forward and it's finished. Yes, it's finished. So, here we go. Very difficult to weather because we have to consider it's based on an airfield, so it's not going to get particularly dirty. It's going to get some staining from rain, so I've put some rain marks on it and there's some streaking down the side of the end of the tank there. I've used the AK rain marks and basically what you do is you just wet the surface. And to get it this subtle, I've just wet the surface with odorless thinners, put some streaks down it, and then with a nice fat brush like this one, just gone down, just gone up and down, flicking it up and down like this, and just basically remove most of it. And you can see I've also got the same effect on the back end here. You can see the the streaks there it just it just sort of tones it down a bit and mats it down I've put some oil staining around here that's just simply a black wash around the top got a black wash here on the grid um, black wash basically everywhere 
on the sides and everything and I've done the streaking on there and I've given it a dry brush of um, a humbral uh, lighter green colour so it's very very subtle you can see on the front wheel there how subtle the dry brushing is but um, obviously weathering something like this is extremely difficult because it's, it's got a semi-gloss finish um, and it wouldn't be particularly dirty it wouldn't be muddy I've put some sort of dust and dirt in the tread of the tires as you can see there um, but nothing much so yeah all in all um, <clears throat> quite pleased with how it's come out I need to put a bit more wash on that fire extinguisher don't know, I'll do that now um, and yeah all in all I'm quite pleased with how it's come out as a kit would I build it again no no way um, it's awful the plastic is horrible um, it's very very strange I've broken a couple of pieces after gluing them and it's almost like super glue um, it kind of the glue doesn't seem to weld it just seems to stick it together so we need to be a bit careful with it um, <clears throat> front wheel there you can see I put painted that black and then went over the the raised areas with a cotton swab and got most of the paint off of there the exhaust what I've done here is I've given it some rust pigments and then gone in with a a cotton bud like so and just remove most of the rust and it kind of gives it that metallic-y that metallic -y kind of look on there this here this this black shield is on the front it's not it shouldn't be rusty so well that's been left black um, that pipe was added underneath there I'd forgotten about that uh, and basically wheels are glued on with, with super glue and, um, and as I say that's it it's done like I say the interior you can't really see much in there so you know that highlighted dash and stuff you can't even really see it in there you can with the naked eye but all you're getting with the camera is reflection off the glazing um, side windows fitted absolutely beautifully front windscreen not so good um, all in all it's a quite impressive looking model I think but it takes a hell of a lot of work now I think some of the problems were caused by myself like I say with this this scene down here with all the Mr Surfacer and that and yeah I've, I've, I've used sprue goo but I've never known sprue goo take that long to dry and I think even now if we catch it in the light I think even now we catch it in the light we can see no we can't but um there was a mark there but you can't catch it so that's disappeared so yeah on the top here again I've used rain marks and then basically got a, a cotton bud soaked in um, uh, odorless thinners and just rolled it across the top and that gives it a kind of blotchy kind of look I think the camera will pick that up there's like a blotchy kind of water stained just where water's been lying and dust is collected and stuff you can see it on the top of there as well so um <clears throat> there we go um all the final assembly was done with um crystal clear except for actually gluing the parts to the chassis I've used um solvent cement for that but everything else is just glued on with uh, crystal clear all the mirrors are glued on with crystal clear so if they get knocked they should just come off rather than snap but um yeah overall underneath is quite basic I haven't bothered whether underneath because it's so basic but uh yeah all in all um quite pleased with how it's come out so there we go guys there's a complete video for you on building painting weathering I haven't shown you any weathering because obviously it's not really much gone on I just thought I'd explain it but basically like I say rain streaks um, odorless thinners and then streak it with a brush um, dry brushing on the wheels dry brushing around this area here uh, some brown stain on the tires and then wiped off with a cloth um, again we've got the watermarks on here and then a wash a black wash in here black wash around the filler and that's it. In fact, you can see that wash is still not even dry there yet. So there we go. Let's get this video edited and get it out to you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.